Let's say that you're managing your photos with Lightroom, which does a very good job, and you're happy with the results. But then you hear about Capture One. Now, it has a very good processing engine for RAW files, and can sometimes produce better results from your photos than Lightroom can, especially with certain formats of RAW like the ones produced by the Fuji X series cameras. However, Capture One, bless it, is not nearly as good as Lightroom for most other things, like importing and organizing your photos and passing them on to other systems and services. So how can you take advantage of both programs and get the best bits of each one without duplicating lots of effort? Well, the first thing you might think of is to set Capture One up as an external editor, like you might do with Photoshop. But unfortunately, Lightroom can only export TIFF or PSD files to external editors, and what you're interested in is Capture One's ability to process RAW, so that won't work. However, Lightroom can export RAW files. So you can set up an export preset to make a copy of the original RAW file in a new temporary location. I put them in a folder called Capture One Import. The preset can also tell an application to open the file after it's exported it. And if you specify Capture One as the application, it will then present you with an import dialog. You can then import this raw photo, and if you want to, you can tell Capture One to leave it in its original location so you don't end up with another copy. Then you can process away to your heart's content in Capture One, tweaking it, making it look beautiful, and when you've got it looking the way you want it, you can use Capture One's process command to export the final result as a TIFF. Now, I have a process recipe set up which exports a 16-bit TIFF to a special folder, and I've configured Lightroom to auto-import from that folder, which means that the new and improved images automatically end up back in the Lightroom catalog. Now, because this is a TIFF file, very little information or image quality is lost in this process, so you can then continue editing this new version using Lightroom's tools if you want to. Now, this sounds like a lot of work, but in fact, once you have it set up, you can bind a keyboard shortcut to your Lightroom export preset, so you can select an image in your Lightroom catalog and export it directly to Capture One with a single key press. And I then bind the same keystroke to Capture One's process command, so I can press it again to send the edited version back to Lightroom. So there's only really two or three key presses involved in doing that whole cycle. One downside is that you now have extra copies of raw files sitting around in the Capture One import folder. If you don't plan to do anything further with these, you can just delete them periodically, or you could use a utility like Hazel to delete them after a week or two. Or you could buy the Open Directly plugin for Lightroom, which can allow you to access the raw file in its original location rather than creating a copy. I'm not sure if it's easy to automate that with a single keystroke though. Okay, let's see how all this is set up. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, and I have some photos, uh, some raw images. Um, let's take a look at these roses here. Now, these roses were a pretty amazing color, but I'm not sure they were quite that vivid. Uh, that's something that Lightroom tends to do to Fuji images, particularly in the reds and greens. And I know all of these things can be tweaked in Lightroom, but I just find that Capture One, out of the box, tends to give me a nicer image. We'll see whether it does make much of a difference on this one. It doesn't on every one. So, Firstly, let's have a look at the preset I'm going to use to export this to Lightroom. So I go to File, Export, and I've already created one here, but you could duplicate it. So it's called RAW to C1 Import, and uh, I've specified a particular folder that I'm going to save this to. I created a new folder called C1 Import because Capture One is going to import it from there. Um, so I'm exporting to that. Uh, I don't change any file names or anything, but I set the image format to original, so it'll get the raw file. There's not really any other important changes here other than after export, I'm opening in an application and I've specified Capture One as being the application. So if I ran that, that's what would happen. But before I do, let's look at a couple of other things. First of all, if I look at this export with preset here, you can see my raw to C1 import has a keystroke attached to it. 
um, I've got Control Alt Command D, which is essentially all of the modifier keys to the left of the spacebar uh, and a D. So how do I set that up? Well, anything that has a unique menu entry name like this can be assigned a keyboard shortcut, but you don't do it in Lightroom. What you do is you go to System Preferences, in the Keyboard section, Shortcuts, and you've got various different categories here. Under App Shortcuts, uh, you can see it's defined here. So the way I do this is basically I hit plus, I specify the application I'm interested in here, and I have to type in the exact menu title as it appears in the menu with the right capitalization, right number of dot dot dots, or whatever may be there, you have to get it right, and then you type the keystroke you want. And so the result is that raw to C1 import is now, when I'm in Lightroom, it's bound to um, Control Option Command D. Okay, let's look at one more thing, and that is the auto import stage of this when I come back from Capture One. So this is under File, Auto Import, I have it enabled, let's look at the settings. So firstly, I specify which folder I'm going to be looking at. Um, so Lightroom, I, I created a special folder for this called Lightroom Auto Import. Lightroom is going to watch that folder and when it sees something in there, it's going to move it into my main pictures folder into a subfolder called Lightroom Auto Imported. Um, I use my standard renaming here, just in case Capture One has done anything strange with the names. So I always name stuff based on the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and the sequence um, of the original capture time. So, uh, so I always know that uh, any files taken at about the same time are going to be very close together if you just sort the files alphabetically. Works very well for me. Don't really need to change anything else there. And that's the auto import setup. So that means that as long as Capture One puts its output into this Lightroom auto import folder, then it should end up back in Lightroom automatically, as long as Lightroom's running or whenever you next run Lightroom. Okay, let's give it a go. I have this image selected. I'm going to hit my magic keystroke, Control, Option, Command, D, and there, almost immediately, it's amazingly fast, we see it in a Capture One import dialog. So the main thing I'm going to check here is that I'm going to store file, store this file actually in its current location. I don't need to create another copy of this raw file that can stay where it is. Uh, if you want to, you can have Capture One do its auto adjustments and things, but pretty much I'm gonna leave it in the um, standard location. And I just hit import all, and there it is in Capture One, my raw file. Let's get rid of that, that's other things happening in the background. Slightly, I think, more uh, subtle colors here, probably a little bit closer to reality. And I'm gonna make some changes to this just so we can see the difference. So um, I'm going to perhaps crop in a little bit closer. I may, um, what should I do here? Well, the cropping is probably enough. Let's uh, zoom in, just see whether things are, yes, I'm on a fairly shallow depth of focus, but things are pretty sharp. You can see the definition here. In fact, let's make it more dramatic. Let's crop in, um, let's crop right in so that actually we've got this folder, this, this, close up here of of the top roses. Now you could of course do all of this later in Lightroom. The real thing I'm interested in in Capture One is the color processing and so on, but I won't spend much time tweaking that here because that's something you can do yourself. So when I've got my final image as I want it in Capture One with all the appropriate color and sharpness and anything else I may want to do, then how have I got Capture One set up to send that back to Lightroom? Well, essentially all you need to do is run the um, the process command, which you can do by clicking on this icon or going file process there. And it will then process this image according to the presets it's got set up in the output section. And I've got one, just one selected, which says TIFF to Lightroom auto import. So that's gonna create a TIFF format image 
16-bit and I don't really care about the names and so on because Lightroom is set up to rename them the way I like Lightroom renaming them and Lightroom is better at this. And um, But where I'm going to store the files is in that auto import directory that we created in Lightroom. And that's basically all I need here. The other thing is that in Capture One, under you can edit the keyboard shortcuts here and I have assigned that same keystroke, uh, Control Alt Command D, to process, which is basically the thing that's going to send it back to Lightroom. So if I hit that, then we can see a little activity thing happening here. The TIFF file is being output and it's gone back to Lightroom. I'll switch back to Lightroom here and there's the original. Now, if I look at them, oh, nothing there, where is it? Well, it's because it's been put in this subfolder called Lightroom auto import, there it is, there's my processed version. It should have all of its dates and times intact and so forth. And I can take that if I want to and stick it back in the same folder as the original. Let's move that. And so there we have my original as processed by Lightroom and we have my tweaked one as processed by Capture One. All essentially in a couple of clicks of my shortcut keystroke, one to go to Capture One and another one to come back from Capture One. There you are. I hope that's useful to some of you. You may well want to tweak this in all sorts of different ways. Uh, there are all sorts of ways, no doubt, you can improve upon it, but I found this to work very well for me. The only challenge then is to decide whether you want to pay the rather high price for Capture One simply to use it as a raw processor like this. That's a decision you have to make, but they do have a 60-day free trial um, which is what I'm using at the moment, which allows you to try out things like this and see whether it works for you and whether you think the results justify the price. Hope you have fun with it.